Ferrari held its Capital Markets Day, an event for investors to get revved up about the business outlook for this premium brand. They cut in half their future forecast for battery electric vehicles, revealed details about their first all-electric model, the Electrica, which we'll go deep into for this video. And the reaction was their worst single stock performance day ever. This video is about the upcoming Electrica, but first, Let's talk briefly about why investors left the event with such low energy. Running a company like Ferrari must be awesome, but sometimes it ain't easy. I'd love to tell you that cutting their forecast for BEVs is what caused their stock to tank, but that's not true. Some may have interpreted it as a cause for concern, while others looked at it for an opportunity to keep making those highly profitable gas-powered supercars. Ferrari is really a luxury brand, and scarcity has to be balanced with growth. Their 2025 guidance actually got revised upwards, so that's good, but investors wanted to see more growth in the out years. Ferrari defended themselves, making it clear that the key to maintaining their brand is scarcity. That's what makes their cars so special. You don't see one drive through at a McDonald's. Thus, the way to increase revenue is by making them increasingly more special and more expensive. Going back to that forecast, at their Capital Markets Day in 2022, they estimated 40% of their vehicles would be fully electric by 2030. Hybrids include the current 296 and the all-new 849 Testarossa, both are plug-in hybrids, and their first BEV would be on the road in 2025. It's now that year and still no Electrica yet. So they bundled up as many details about this first upcoming Ferrari battery EV prior to its reveal early in 2026 with deliveries later in the year. Electrica will not be a two-door sports car, so not like the Yongwang U9 Extreme or Rimac Navara R. It will be a two plus two seater, likely with four doors. So a better comparison would be the Porsche Taycan, specifically I'll go with the Turbo GT with the YSAC package, and the Xiaomi Su7 Ultra. AMG has teased their GTXX, and we kind of know what to expect from that, but full details will also come early next year. On the surface, Ferrari is saying they'll have over 1,000 horsepower, which gives the traditional car journalists a juicy headline, but we know better. 1,000 horsepower in a high-performance EV is kind of the starting point, not really a bragging point. Porsche uses two large motors for a combined 1,019 horsepower and up to 1,093 horsepower in short bursts. Xiaomi is a tri-motor, two in the rear, one in the front, with over 1,500 horsepower. And the AMG GTXX, if that's what they really decide to call it, will also be a tri-motor, but with over 1,341 horsepower. The Ferrari will be a quad motor, and I hope that when the full specs are revealed, it will do much better than 1,000 horsepower. With all these cars, acceleration is just stupid fast, two to two and a half seconds to reach 62 miles an hour, and sometimes the lawyers make them explain all the details for how the testing was conducted. Zero to 200 kilometers per hour or a quarter mile would be a much better way to compare these vehicles. Top speed is also a ridiculous number and something that most people thankfully will never get to experience. Ferrari claims a 193 mile per hour top speed, better than the best Taycan, but not as crazy as the crazy Xiaomi or AMG's rumored top speed, both of which are in excess of 200 miles an hour. Motors front and rear are permanent magnet synchronous motors, not uncommon for this type of EV. The front motors are smaller than the rear, as is preferred for high-performance vehicles. You can see that the left and right motors are mounted to a common center housing. Each motor powers the wheels separately, so torque vectoring is possible. Max RPM for the motors is a spec that performance EVs are starting to brag about, and it's meaningful to provide a broad range of performance across different speeds. Ferrari's front motors can spin up to about 30,000 RPM, which matches the best of the best coming out of China. The more powerful rear motors 
spin up to about 25,500 RPM. To achieve this, Ferrari, like other EV makers, place a carbon fiber sleeve over the rotor so the extreme centripetal forces don't blow things apart. Those sleeves keep in place a haulback array of rare earth magnets. This is where the magnets are arranged in a specific pattern of magnetic field orientation. Advantages to this are high power density, the disadvantages are cost, but you know, it's a Ferrari, so who cares, and manufacturing complexity. On the stator, Ferrari is also doing something unique. At, at least I've not heard about other EV makers doing this. Cheap EV motors use regular round copper wire for their windings. Most use a hairpin winding where the copper has a rectangular cross section for better fill efficiency, thus more power output per kilogram. Ferrari went with a Schlitz winding. Uh, uh, it's, uh, sorry, it's a, a Litz winding which is a braided wire. The advantage is greater efficiency, cool, but it's more expensive and generally not as energy dense as a hairpin design. So it's an interesting design choice for them. By the way, Ferrari, Porsche, Xiaomi, and everyone else uses a radial flux motor, but AMG is going with an axial flux motor and I have an upcoming video on that unique technology. The electric motors drive a gear reduction. That's common for almost all EVs. Porsche Taycan is unique by offering a two-speed transmission in an electric vehicle. The front motors in Ferrari are capable of decoupling for greater efficiency on the highway, leaving the rear motors to keep things going. Each drive unit has an inverter mounted on top, so two high-voltage cables run from the battery, where it then gets converted to three-phase AC for the motors. You can see in the video that this is a mature product ready to quietly enter production in 2026, but Ferrari will put its own spin on what a battery electric should sound like. A high precision sensor on the rear drive unit picks up on the levels and frequency of vibration. So like the pickup on an electric guitar, it will turn those vibrations into sounds for the driver. Now, will they obnoxiously pump it out for people to hear outside of the vehicle? Personally, I hope not, but you know, who knows? Another dilemma performance EV manufacturers have to face is the lack of shifting. Rather than fake shifts, Ferrari is going with something they call torque shift engagement. Squeeze the right paddle to progressively boost up the power delivery along five different levels, while the left paddle progressively increases the regenerative braking deceleration, kind of like downshifting where the engine braking can be felt. Ferrari's first battery EV will be in the rough category of an 800 volt system, as you would expect, 880 volts maximum. Although they're starting to see the most extreme models like the Yongwang U9 Extreme turning that up to 1200 volts. Ferrari's battery will use NMC pouch cells arranged into 15 battery modules. At the cell level, the energy density is very good at 305 watt hours per kilogram, although we're starting to see semi-solid state batteries push that upwards to 350 watt hours per kilogram, like the Wee Lion batteries offered in NEO vehicles. Stuffing high energy density cells into a module, and then those modules into a pack is actually not state of the art for EV design, but there's a reason why they did this. Ferrari claims that the pack energy density of 195 watt hours per kilogram is best in class, but I can find other EVs with better numbers than that. Newer EVs go with a cell to pack design, allowing more cells into a smaller, lighter pack. Had Ferrari gone this way, their energy density at the pack level would have been even better but Ferrari say they went this way to allow for their first EV to be upgradable because Ferraris age gracefully. They aren't a disposable product. In a few years, as lighter, more powerful modules become available, you could conceivably upgrade, but I don't know about this. Plus, it gives EV haters a reason to speculate that the batteries are gonna die after four years and just need replacement, which is not the case if you design it halfway decent. Another consequence of this battery design is weight. Again, EV haters will talk about the weight and Enzo rolling over in his grave. Yeah, actually, I think the Per Sangue would have done that first, but we'll never know. Ferrari says the aluminum intensive Electrica will weigh in at about 2,300 kilograms, over 5,000 pounds. 
That's about the same as the top Porsche and Xiaomi models, but it has a larger battery, 120 kilowatt hours for the Ferrari versus 105 for the Porsche and 94 kilowatt hours for the Xiaomi. Ferrari claims when they put a body on their EV platform, it will have a range of over 530 kilometers on Europe's WLTP test. So figure you know, just under 300 miles EPA. That puts it in a similar range to its competitors. Personally, I'd rather take those top two modules out, get a little less range and a little less weight. If you can afford a Ferrari, you can find a few extra Bitcoin in your sofa to pay for home charging. By the way, they said they arranged the extra modules like they did to keep the wheelbase short and sporty. Larger batteries often lead to a longer wheelbase, which is good for ride quality, but can compromise on performance maneuverability. But again, Celta Pack would have also allowed them to squeeze more cells into a shorter wheelbase. The Ferrari will have four-wheel steering and a 48-volt active suspension system. It's actually their third generation system, having been used first on the Per Sangue crossover and now on the F80 also. Ferrari notes that like most EVs, the center, spelled R-E of gravity, is 80 millimeters lower than a comparable gas engine vehicle. And weight distribution is 47% front and 53% rear. Suspension hardware is independent and sexy as hell, as are the carbon ceramic disc brakes. So, you know, all in all, I'm aroused. I, I, I mean, look, I'm excited by the technology. Sure, we don't know what the body looks like, but it's gonna be hot. And speculation is that the price will come in at over half a million euros, which converting to US dollars yeah, is just a lot. At the end of their Capital Markets Day presentation, Ferrari CEO said that pricing of the Electra has not been finalized, and I wouldn't be surprised if they jack the number up higher. Given the reactions from investors, breaking even on their first battery EV just isn't gonna be good enough. As for their competition, Porsche and AMG are no slouches on paper and have some advantages already. As for Xiaomi, if they enter the Europe market, it's gonna to be tough to compete with their state of charge. Zeker, Denza by BYD and Neo are already there with high performance four doors, so Ferrari may have to lean heavily into that scarcity of their brand to compete with the best EVs in the world. Maybe this is why they scaled back their forecast for BEVs, not because they don't like them, but because they require a new design philosophy and technology that doesn't come easily. We'll have to wait a few more months for the full reveal of the Ferrari Electrica. In the meantime, oh yeah, let's look at that skateboard some more.